What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back. It's your boy, Blue, and this is the Rail Driver USB Train Cab Controller. I've been using it for the past year, and here are a few things I've learned after consecutive use. First, included in the box is the fully assembled Rail Driver itself, which actually has a little weight to it. Also in the box are sticker decals, the manual, an audio auxiliary cable, a USB cable, and the power cable. The audio auxiliary cable and USB cable are permanently attached to the back, which I'm not a fan of. And there's actually a built-in subwoofer, but I have literally never used it. So the audio cable is just always in the way. But if you are not using the built-in speaker, then you don't need the power cable. The USB is all you need to plug in for the rail driver to work. The rail driver is fully made of plastic and just a little bit shorter in length than a keyboard. It's actually smaller than I expected, but after playing with it for a while, I think the size is perfect for a desktop setup. The rail driver is designed and laid out to imitate the generic controls of an American train, but it can also be used to drive all different types of trains. So the independent brake lever is located on the far right and has a smooth access going forward and back, but you also have the ability to bail off the independent brake by pulling the lever to the right while in the fully applied or released position. The automatic brake or train brake is the big lever to the left of the independent, also with a smooth axis from top to bottom, except when you get to the top of the axis, you have to push it a little bit harder to get it into the final detent, which is how you activate the emergency brake. Next is the throttle and dynamic brake lever, also on a smooth axis, but you can see here that there's a gate in the middle to separate the throttle range and the braking range. So here we have max throttle at the bottom, then idle, go around the gate and you have dynamic brake setup or idle depending on the train, then max brakes at the top. You can see the lettering in the decal has rubbed off after a year of use. Now here on the left, we have the reverser, allowing us to choose our direction of travel forward, neutral, and reverse. This is not a smooth access, rather it's notched, so it springs into one of three positions, although there is still a tight axis in between them, which is used when driving steam trains, for example, to choose finer reverser inputs. Again, all the levers are made of plastic, so you can't be too rough with them, and they feel a bit cheap, but, but not in a bad way. Like, they don't feel like a premium heavy-duty product, which is not bad because that would raise the price significantly. The piece that I am mostly worried about, though, is the horn. You're you are able to push it forward and pull it back, which is extremely satisfying to do, but the most fragile part of the controller is extremely flimsy and is the most common part broken. So if you break it, you can buy a replacement that they sell separately on their website. The range and handbrake switches feel fine on the left, but the rest of the buttons for the alerter, sander, and bell feel a bit wobbly, which is not due to wear and tear. It came in the box like this, so it's an interesting design choice. You can see my bell sticker wearing off. Once you get these stickers in place, they are very hard to remove or replace. The screen above is normally used as a speedometer, but some games, for example, Run 8, allow you to use it for other purposes, such as the speed limit, distance counter, throttle notch, and coupler force. Back over on the right is the wiper and light rotary switches, which is exactly what they are, switches with three positions and not axes. Finally, on the base of the rail driver, there are 28 more switches. Some games allow you to customize what these do, but Train Sim World does not. They've already preset it for you whether you like it or not. And I haven't memorized what they do because it varies per train. But one thing that is consistent is that the left and right arrows are used to open and close doors, which is why it's one of my favorite buttons and so much faster than doing it with a keyboard and mouse. The rail driver is for PC only and only officially, unofficially supports Train Sim World, Train Simulator Classic, Trains with a Z, Run 8, 
World of Subways, Train Masters, Microsoft Train Simulator, and Open Rails. For Train Sim World and Run 8, I know there's no special driver download required, it's just plug and play, but for Train Sim Classic, there's a plugin you have to install. So check the website to see if they support your sim and if it requires a special driver or plugin download. I'm really hoping for support for more modern train sims like SimRail, Railroaders, Railroad Online, Train Life, and Derail Valley in the future. But based on the Windows Vista design of their website, I won't get my hopes up for any updates. This controller is like 10 years old and there's been no changes. I would love to see a new modern design Removing the speaker would make it massively lighter and maybe add a new European control version. There's a lot that can be done here, but all that to say, is it worth it today as is? And my answer is yes. It's a massive game changer. No more fiddling around on my keyboard or even using my mouse to search for common controls in game. I can be hands on at all times. It's like using a steering wheel versus a keyboard and mouse for racing games or a joystick for flight simulators. Even if you're not into driving American trains, it still works nicely with European trains and even steam trains. So for me, it's 100% worth it. I'll leave the link to buy it for yourself down in the description, but from my experience, supplies are very limited. So pick it up while it's available. I hope this helps you make a decision whether it's worth it or not for you. But thanks for watching and remember you have three choices give up give in or give it all you got peace love and god bless you i'll see you guys next time next video i'm out